body politic capacity, they operate for the convenience of the state to administer the state duties. This is why the county can be sued because we're state actors. Okay? These people are state actors, and the 14th Amendment says, nor shall any state deprive any personal life, liberty, or property without the process of law. So could, could the state be sued? The state cannot be sued in its own court, no, but the, the state actor can be sued. Okay, so where is a citizen's, where does he go when his constitutional right has been violated by state law that the county does not protect him from? He, he, he can either, multiple choice, what remedy multiple does he choice, have? okay? Well, under the, what's called 492, section 19, 1983, um, the title 42 of the United States Code, which was originally called the Good Luck's Clan Act, the very purpose of that, the very purpose of that is to take a state actor who's abusing or misusing their power, you can say violating their oath, and make them accountable. And the statute says, for money damages or injunctive relief. There's a fee shifting statute. These are, the, these are the cases that I've been involved in my whole career. There's also an Arkansas Civil Rights Act, but you can sue a state actor in federal court for violating the provisions of the U.S. Constitution, and you can have a pending state court matter go up with it, and also uh, have a lawsuit for violating the state constitution. Now, you can't sue the state in its own courts. It's set up a state claims commission. You cannot take the state to federal court. That's the 11th Amendment. But you can still sue for injunctive relief to say this act of the state is unconstitutional. And you can also sue the state actor for personal liability for violating the Constitution. There is a civil remedy. And that's passed pursuant to Section 5 of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution. Is that what the problem is with the other ordinances? Is there is a penalty in there? The problem with that ordinance is, number one, it, it declares the county to be sovereign. So we have the right to be free from the commanding hand of state and federal government. What is that? That's only half the statement, though. What? You have to, you have to take the whole statement in context to be legally accurate, don't you? No. Listen to this. Sebastian, you tell me this is true or not. He's been Sebastian talking Sebastian County for five is right to be free from the commanding hand of state and federal government. That's not true. It says, and has the right to refuse to cooperate with state and federal government officials. That's a separate. So that's really two clauses. And you can say, Sebastian County has the right to be free from the commanding hand. And you also say, Sebastian County has the right to refuse to cooperate with state and federal government officials in response to the constitutional state and federal government measures. So let me ask you, so what I've witnessed over the last 90 days across the country is governors making rules some people can't go to church. Things that I thought I would never see. What is the remedy of the people? For Those are executive orders. Yes. Okay. So what is the remedy for Let me give you an example, a classic example of executive order. The Emancipation Proclamation of the Executive Order. You guys are right. That's a state. The three powers, executive, legislative, and judicial, they're separate powers, and they all have power. And they use that power as executive order. The remedy is to go to court and say, you, sir, have violated the Constitution and have the court uh, order them to stand down. They can't do it. They've exceeded their powers. You say with sovereign immunity, though, we can still, an individual can still hold the state accountable. The state itself? I mean, tell me how if someone that's been had their constitutional rights can be violated. With the state having sovereign immunity, what can they do? I've defended 6,000 cases where they allege that there were lawsuits against the government. They're all against county government. Those are all county lawsuits. That they, the popular thing is to file a case in federal court, so you violate, violate the U.S. Constitution. Against the county? Against the county. What about the state? Against the state. Again, you can't sue the state in federal court because of the amendment. I mean, you know, it's the amendment. Okay, so if, if the state is the state, you go to state claims commission, but you can't get injunctive relief. Okay, so if the state does an unconstitutional law, the county does not protect against that. You say we don't have the authority to do that. We don't. And we have no need to do that. You're saying, uh, but yet the you state don't have, power. don't have the power to do that. But the state has sovereign immunity. Yes. Yes. So where does that leave me? Well, you, sovereign immunity doesn't mean that you can't go to court. It means that you can't get a money damage judgment. You get a money damage judgment against the state over 
state claims commission. Okay? State claims. But we're not really talking about money here. We're talking about power. Right. If they exceed their power, that's the reason you go to the judicial branch to have the judicial branch say, you've exceeded the power given to you by the Constitution. I wanted to ask Ms. Hall a question about, could you run back over real quick the 